Hi, this is Scott Kilos here, 6 Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video, we're back with another uh, VX6 Operator Series video. And for today, what I want to address is probably my most frequently asked question, whether it's a, a Facebook user group or uh, comment sections here on YouTube or Rumble or whatever platform you're watching this video on. Uh, the question I get asked almost invariably each and every time is, what is the best upgrade antenna for the AC VX6? Fortunately, that's an easy answer, but I want to talk about a couple of other uh, issues and some things that you may or may not be a, be aware of as, in terms of alternatives. But to begin with, when we talk about the factory antenna, uh, I got by with the factory antenna for a good long time, actually. It, it works just fine. I, I didn't really have any, uh, any major issues with it. But it was a, a case of you know, you don't know what you don't know, I, I guess is the best way to describe it. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute when I get to talking about the best antenna for this radio. But my major issue with the factory antenna is that it's a bit on the fragile side. It's got a decent amount of flex from about the midway point out to the tip of the antenna. But from the midway point to the base, uh, it's fairly rigid. And there's a point right here uh, at the juncture where if this radio takes a... Uh, a tip down fall it's it's going to bend the antenna pretty badly and in fact i i have a the yesu uh ft70 is a ft70 dr is another another bad performer in that aspect and having a particularly fragile antenna so initially when i was looking at upgrade antennas and i'll go through my process uh, as i went through this initially i was looking for something that was a little bit more had some more flex to it now just to see if the world was any better with an upgraded antenna, one of the first things that I did in terms of experimentation was I had a couple of these diamond SRH77CA antennas laying around. And I've used these on other YAC radios such as the FT70, the FT3DR, the FT60, and I've had great results with them. And I had equally great results uh, with the VX6. Now it is a whip antenna, it's about a 19 inch antenna, but um, one thing that I, I, I like to have is, in addition, I don't mind using whips, but there are occasions when I need to use a shorter antenna, depending on where this radio is being carried or how it's being packed. Uh, long whip antennas are cool uh, when, you're, when you're basically operating the radio actively, but when you have this in carry mode, uh, that long whip antenna can become pretty distracting as it's slapping you in the face if it's mounted on some, like a carrier or a pack. So it can be a, a little bit unwieldy. So I wanted to go with something a bit shorter, and one of the best alternatives I found in terms of diamond antennas that are uh, a bit shorter is this SRH701 Alpha. Um, this does not work as well as the whip, and that's by virtue of the fact that it's just not as long. Uh, it's not going to be as resonant, it's not going to perform as well, because it's... Well, it's a compromised antenna. Anytime you do something to change the antenna to make it more compact or, or whatnot, you're going to run into compromise points. Now, sometimes those compromise points won't matter and everything works just fine, but uh, other times it can, it's noticeable. So one thing I did notice with the SRH701 was it gave me about the same standard of performance with the factory antenna, whereas the uh, SRH77CA obviously gave me a lot better coverage, a lot better reception. Um, so those are two alternatives, but the one big problem with both of these antennas is a VX6 is a tri-band radio. Uh, of those three bands that, that it uh, operates on, fortunately, the two that are covered by these antennas are, of course, going to be 2 meter and 70 centimeter. And when it comes to amateur radio, that's kind of the bulk of where everything's happening. But a lot of people buy the VX6 because they want that third 1.25 meter band. And performance with the antenna on that 1.25 meter band can be important. Now, for me, it's not so much so. Um, we, have, we have a 1.25 meter repeater here in my area that I have never in the seven years I've been monitoring it I have never once heard anyone ever ever operating that that repeater I've operated it a couple of times and sent out some calls and I've got nothing in return so when it comes to 1.25 meter it's unfortunately it is so misused that I think at some point we're going to end up losing that band unless people get more active but to be honest with you, we have a hard enough time 
keeping people active on the two meter and 70 centimeter repeaters around here. When it comes to amateur radio, to be honest with you, all the activity I hear is all on GMRS. I, I don't hear hams doing anything at the FM level in, in my region uh, other than nets. I, I hear no conversations during the day. Now, we, we have a neighboring repeater right here a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit sad, to be honest with you, but uh, that's not what the intent of this video is. The intent of this video is to talk about antennas. So when we're talking about the SRH77CA and the uh, SRH701Alpha, both, of course, a dual band, 2 meter, 70 centimeter antennas, and both can be used with a VX6. Um, of course, just understand that you're not going to be able to operate 1.25 meter, but if you have one of these antennas laying around, there's nothing wrong with putting that on the VX6. But if you want the ultimate best antenna, now when I say that this antenna that I'm showing you, this SRH320 Alpha, when I say this antenna gave me the most dramatic improvement in performance of any antenna I've ever put on a radio, um, that is that is a 100% true statement. Uh, this woke this VX6 up like nothing else, and, and I don't know what particular magic is involved in this antenna, but when I put this on my Rig Expert antenna analyzer, this thing was nearly perfect in terms of, of match at the, uh, uh, at the 2 meter and 70 centimeter uh, bands, I was getting almost nearly a one-to-one -one match, and on 1.25 meter, I believe it was about one, I think it was 1. Uh, 1.5, somewhere in that region. I'll have to check my notes, but the the um, the actual SWR measurements were excellent. Now, SWR doesn't tell the whole story. What tells the whole story often comes down to an anecdotal measurement, and anecdotally, this and this radio woke up. I was hearing things that I wasn't hearing before, and that goes back to that you don't know what you don't know situation. It is an excellent antenna, but I will tell you, in all honesty, a bit on the fragile side. Uh, when you pick this up, you're kind of like, ooh, that's uh, this is pretty lightweight right here, but it's got a lot of flex to it, so I'm not too worried. But what I worry about is this seam right here, and I worry about this seam right here. The only failures I've seen of these antennas, and, and that would apply, of course, to the SRH77CA and the uh, 720 uh, or 701 as well, is they have a tendency, if you hit this thing hard enough at this point, to snap right at this point. So something to consider, but really, to be completely honest with you, all antennas are fragile. All antennas are subject to breakage because by the nature of what you're trying to do by basically running a vertical thin wire out of the top of your radio, it's very difficult to make this thing bomb proof. You hit it hard enough, it's going to break. That's why you always want to have backup antennas in your IMCOM bag. And I've done a separate video on that, uh, covering that. But um, when it comes to my antenna of choice, and another thing I, I kind of like is that the... Uh, the 320 Alpha isn't nearly as long as the SRH77CA. It's also not as heavy. This tends to be pretty top heavy, so when you have a radio sitting on a table, uh, it has a tendency to impart some, some, uh, some leverage on the radio to knock it over. This is actually a fairly lightweight antenna. Uh, it's something you have to hold to behold, but uh, it, is, uh, it is a good bit lighter, especially as it gets towards the top here. So it makes the radio balance a little better when it's uh, in its sitting position. Uh, but as I said, the, uh, the testing on this, awesome. And as far as the actual results, awesome. Now, another question that I get asked related to antennas is how do you retain the IP67 rating in the absence of the factory antenna? And this is a pretty easy one to answer. At the top of the radio, at the SMA connection, there's a large rubber gasketed area. It's all part of this entire um, uh, structure right here that includes your plug for your speaker mic. This is all rubber. Now there is a built-up skirt on the sides that interfaces with the side of the antenna and the antenna just fits into that. But where your gasketing is actually coming from is the fact that this antenna is a flat bottom antenna. There is no skirt on it. For instance on an FT60 you have about an eighth of an inch of rubber that extends down beyond the base of the antenna, but this is perfectly flat on the bottom. The purpose of that is when you snug this down, that flat surface on the bottom of the antenna contacts that flat rubber gasket at the bottom of the radio. Now one virtue that the diamonds all share 
they are all flat bottom as well. And they're also sufficiently threaded so that when you thread this antenna down and you'll feel it hit the rubber, it'll start getting sticky right about there. Give it another little turn to snug it up. And IP67, I'm, per, I'm reasonably confident, is going to be perfectly retained because, as I said, this is all gasketed. I have not taken the radio apart to see if there's internal gasketing involved as well, but uh, they've taken pretty good steps. I, I really don't see how there's much of a fundamental difference between how this antenna mates up versus this one, other than this antenna is not wide enough at the base to contact the, the sides here, but I don't think that's the intent of that side anyway. So I'm pretty certain that uh, you're going to maintain your IP67 rating with that, uh, because again, the antenna is not extended above the, the base at all. So that's kind of it in a, in a nutshell. I, I know I say that a lot. I'm going to have to stop that. That's one of about five crutches that I have that I'm trying to eliminate. So that is kind of it when it comes to antennas. Now, invariably when I do one of these videos and I talk about antennas at all I'm gonna have people jump into the comments and they're gonna recommend two different antennas to me one is going to be the signal stick now I don't do signal stick antennas and there's a reason for that um, in fact that reason is addressed in their very own FAQ on their on their web page they talk about hey you know we we do understand these look a little primitive and a little home cooked um, and they're working to improve that, and I hope at some point they do, but I, uh, until then, it's just an aesthetics thing, to be honest with you. Now, I do know somebody, um, uh, somebody of my own uh, acquaintance, and in fact, he's related to me. He has a VX6, and he has a signal stick antenna on it, and thinks very highly of it. Uh, again, I just don't use them because they look, you know, um, they they look home cooked, um, and I really don't see any advantage on that antenna over something like the SRH. 320 Alpha, other than that super elastomer um, antenna material that they use. Uh, okay, uh, and, and I, again, I always promise that I may eventually get one of those in because oftentimes um, form follows function and something maybe ugly is sin on a Sunday, but if it works really good, then it's it has a beauty in and of itself. And that can be attributed to a lot of things, Glocks, A10 Warthogs, all kinds of stuff that aren't particularly attractive, but boy, do they work good. So um, I'll probably start some flames with the Glock thing, but oh, well, I'm not a Glock guy, by the way. I'm a revolver guy. But um, getting back to antennas, the other one that gets brought up, it's a smiley antennas, and I don't use those because they don't have an effective dual band antenna. Uh, everything's mono band with them, but at some point I want to get one of their antennas for GMRS at least and, and see what all the hubbub is about. But I've gone on long enough about antennas for the VX6. That's pretty much it. I, I strongly recommend the Diamond SRH320 Alpha, but if you happen to have a, a 77CA or, or a uh, uh, 701 Alpha laying around, they'll work just as effectively. So, with that, thank you for watching and or listening. This is Scott Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee from Visalia, California. Have a wonderful day.